god! I can't believe I'm making this. Woo! This is... Guys, I want to say that this is, like, therapeutic, but it also, like, hurts a little. So, like, if I get emotional, I apologize. If I... Yeah, like, if I seem like I'm all over the place, I apologize. If anything, I'm just apologizing in advance because... This is... I need to get myself together. Hey guys, um, this is me, and as you can read by the title, um, I'm finally gonna be telling you the story about me and my toxic relationship that I just recently got out of. I was gonna do this somewhere down along the line, but I think it's better if I do it now because one, it's very therapeutic for me. Two, to the emotions and like my thoughts and everything, like, I'm going through this right now, so, like, well, I'm not going through it, but, like, I'm going through getting over this relationship and everything, so why bring it up later? Like, why not just do it right now? I will give you guys my thoughts, like, my fresh thoughts and everything. Like, I'm going to be remembering, like, some, like, what if I don't remember things from when I move on? Because, honestly, this guy put me through so much that I filmed this video already, and it was so all over the place, and I didn't know where to start, and I didn't know what came before or what came after, because this dude put me through so much that like I don't even know what happened first because ooh, like this oh my gosh guys 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 you're gonna okay first of all you guys are gonna think that I'm crazy for staying with this dude for so long but I just want to say that love is fucking blind love makes you be a dumb bitch and I was that dumb bitch and um I'm gonna admit it yeah um, and also, I was in a very bad state of mind. Relationships go through good times and bad times, but some of the bad times that I went through in this relationship should not be bad, considered bad times, like in the norm. You get me? Okay, I don't know if you get me, whatever. Here we go. Hi guys, uh, I had to mention this very quickly before, like, I forget that I ever even wanted to say this, but because I don't think I'm going to be able to explain it in the video. I don't think I'm ever going to even address it. But I don't regret it because I learned so many freaking things from this. I'm going to say that I was not okay going into this relationship. Me, as people, we accept the love that we think we deserve. And I've had, I have really bad self-esteem issues and... I feel like I accepted this love because I never thought that I ever deserved any better. I never, never once did I think that I deserved better because I feel like I'm damaged goods with the things that I've gone through in life. And I feel like he was the same way. And that's the way that we connected because we both had that those similarities in in us and I mean I feel like that's the way like that's why he treated me so, so horribly because finally the one person who actually did care and did want to stick by his side and did love him unconditionally I guess he really didn't know what to do with me and this is just the way that it played out because he tried so hard to make me be just like everybody else even though I wasn't and he knew that and he does know that I just wanted to say that like yeah, like, I accept, I, I went back and back over again. You guys are going to be, like, so shook. You guys are going to be so confused as to why I kept on going back and I kept on going back and I kept on going back. One, I put so much, like, I, it sucks that, like, I put so much trust and faith into this dude that he would be a better person. That, like, it just, it did, it's not, like, he just, you can't make somebody change if they don't want the change. I mean, I know his heart and I know he has a good heart, but he's just, he has his own problems. And that's why this is a toxic relationship because of his own personal problems. It's, I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure that if he was okay, we would have worked out. I, kn I know it for a fact. And that's why I kept on trying and I kept on trying and I kept on trying. Because he was just so lost when I found him. And as as was I, I was kind of in the mix of finding myself. And then next thing you know, like, he just ended up taking me down with him. And, like, I tried so hard to get him out of that hole that he was in. But, like, it just, 
I'd get him out, and then he'd fall back in, and then I'd get him out, and then, like, now he's just way too in there, and that's what makes me very, very sad is the fact that it beat him. Like, his problems took over him. I know that all these actions were not because he hated me or because he didn't love me or because he didn't want me. It's just that he was looking for more. And not more as in, like, the love, because, like, he's never had that, but more as in more to fill a void. And I don't think not just... I Like, of course, like, one human can't fill one void. Like, you have to do that yourself. You can't use other people to fill your voids. Like, you have to fill your void yourself. And I just think that he was looking for that. And he's just... he's He was just doing it wrongly and that's not okay and I think this is important to say because I don't think I'm going to touch on that and if I do well then like good for me but this is just for future references <laughs> but I think this is very I need to say this I need to put this in the intro that was my mistake and that was his too is that I was accepting less because I thought I was less and that's where I went wrong but where he went wrong was the same thing he thought he was less so he was making himself less you know you get me i i don't know if you guys will understand but i hope i hope you guys do i really do learn from my mistakes learn from his mistakes and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video uh also i want to say that i do really love this person still um i don't think a love love can ever go away and if it does go away i don't believe that it was love so yeah i really do love this person, it might not be in the same way as it used to be, but I still do care about him. I would do anything for him, um, even though he's hurt me as much as he did. I know his heart, I know he has a good heart, and I just feel like he's lost, and like he just made bad decisions, and everybody makes bad decisions. And he just de deserves a lot, and I hate what he's going through, that it's controlling him so much that he had the ability to do this to me. But that's just not him, and I promise you that. And I might, I might, you guys might think that I sound stupid, but no, like I, I truly believe that that is not him. But I've accepted the fact that he's never going to be him. We're gonna call him, um, Brayden. When me and Brayden met was we have a mutual friend named Catherine. We're gonna call her Catherine. Catherine and I became very, very good friends in sophomore, the beginning of sophomore year. Me and Catherine became very good friends in the beginning of my sophomore year. I'm currently going to be a senior. They were friends, and um, in the hallway, I would see Catherine and Brayden talk. I always thought that Brayden was cute, but I knew that Catherine kind of had a thing for him in our freshman year, but it was never, like, that serious. Um, and, but, like, still, like, I still honor girl code. Like, I didn't think that it was okay. So, I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just not gonna, like, it's just whatever. I just thought he was cute. I didn't think anything of it, right? But until one time where me and Brayden actually started kind of flirting in the hallway as I would meet up with Catherine and everything. Um, this was during around November, December. At the end of November, my birthday is November 28th, and I was going to celebrate my birthday on December 3rd. So December 3rd comes around and I had slid in his DMs and I asked him if he could come over to my hangout. So Brayden comes over to my hangout and that is where it all started, December 3rd of 2016, because I was turning 16. I was turning 16? I was turning 16. Whoa. So Brayden comes over, uh, I meet him at my front door, we hug, we go to the living room where everybody was at and we start playing games and of course, we have to do the high school truth or dare type of thing. So me and Brayden ended up kissing and we had to kiss for like, I don't know how long and we ended up going over the time and we kissed in my guest restroom and that's kind of where just like everything, like sparks flew and like uh, he ended up catching feelings for me, I guess, or like he was, in he became interested in me, but I wasn't really interested in him because I was current, I was, I had been talking to this um, guy he is irrelevant, so I'm not going to give him a name. <laughs> but, um, so I was 
like interested in somebody else but I also thought Brayden was cute so that's why I invited him over and Brayden ended up telling Catherine that he was interested in me and Catherine told me and I obviously told Catherine like I'm not about that life I'm not gonna do that I don't do that I don't go for my friends like people because they weren't exes but like they had talked you get me and she was like no that was so last year like it doesn't even matter like it was nothing serious like he doesn't even remember talking to me because he would say that he would be like I don't even remember like talking talking to Catherine like honestly and then um Catherine like approved and Brayden said like he didn't like really mind like he was interested in me you know and I was like okay whatever but I still didn't feel really comfortable with it I didn't get I didn't start getting comfortable with it until Catherine was actually really trying hard uh to help Brayden get me you get me okay whatever and then um me and this other dude stopped talking because of Brayden because Brayden would literally walk me to my classes while that dude was walking me to my class so I would have literally two guys on each side walking me to my class and it was the most embarrassing thing everybody would look at me because one period this guy would walk to me to my class and we would hug and then the next period Brayden and walk to me walk me to my class and we would hug like it was it was I looked like a fucking hoe but it's not even what I meant to do like I was seriously honestly not even into Brayden I was into the other dude but the other dude kind of really didn't like the fact that Brayden was trying to get me and the other dude told me like you like this is on you like if you go to Brayden like just make sure like no he was trying to tell me that like if Brayden takes you it just shows a lot right which I didn't appreciate that because takes you like what even like I'm not somebody just to take you get me like I'm a human being like whatever whatever okay this is kind of like irrelevant but what ended up happening was the other dude stopped talking to me because Brayden was, uh, I guess, like a threat. I don't know if he was like a threat or like, I don't know. The dude just didn't like that Brayden was on my ass the whole entire time. So the other dude like got out of the picture and then like I kind of was like, no, like I was trying to get the other dude back because I honestly was really interested in that guy. And, um, well, like they kind of, it's not that they made me choose, but like it was kind like they didn't say it, but it was like I had to I was like you know what I really connect with Brayden on another type of level I'm not gonna lie but I just wanted to be friends I didn't want anything serious I didn't I wasn't expecting anything serious I wasn't looking for a relationship I was looking for like a flame you know like you know I'm in high school you know I'm not looking for anything serious but I was like you know what me and Brayden connect and like we actually vibe and like like it was he was I yeah the other dude got out of the picture Brayden and I start talking and uh I think things escalated pretty quickly um we talked for like a month and then on January 21st he asked me to be his girlfriend and when he asked me to be his girlfriend let me stop right here of the story and let me tell you where the lies start so me and Brayden start talking right and this dude, keep in mind how hard he tried to get me to, like, be interested in him. <sighs> okay, so this guy would tell me that he wasn't interested in drinking or smoking. And um, he would literally call me when he was high. And I, I could tell, like, something was up with him, but I didn't know that he was high. You get me? Like, I was kind of, like, you know, benefit of the doubt. Like, he was with friends. I thought he was just being crazy. You know how guys act different in front of friends? I just thought that. But no, uh, in reality, he was actually getting high. And throughout when we were talking, I ended up finding out that he was trying to sleep with other people. I didn't find that out until after we started dating. So don't come for me. But yeah, he was trying to sleep with other people while I was just only focused on him. Whatever. January 21st comes around and he has this ranch type of thing where he, his family like owns and they throw events and everything. So we... Um, as you guys know, Karina, my best friend, she actually, one of her exes is friends with Brayden. So our first date was at his ranch and it was with a bunch of dudes. So I was the only girl. Like I remember I wanted to go to Peter Piper because I was hungry as fuck, 
but he took me to his ranch with a bunch of dudes and I was the only girl. I actually felt really uncomfortable and he didn't want to be there, but that, like, I, I, I was just there, you know? And, um, his best friend, or his friend ended up talking, like, major shit about my best friend and it was just the funniest thing because it was really awkward. I didn't really want to be there. It was kind of just going to shit and I didn't really feel comfortable. That was, like, during our talking stage. Okay, so finally... After a couple of dates and everything and after talking for like a month, on January 21st, we went to his ranch and it was him, his friend, which is Karina's ex-boyfriend, and Karina because Karina and her ex-boyfriend actually are like kind of semi-friends and they thought that, we all thought that it would be cool if we all of us hung out. Sitting next to Karina and I was telling her how I was scared because, because let me tell you. That day, on our way to the ranch, Brayden kept on getting phone calls and, I mean, text messages. Like, seriously, every time I went out with this dude, every time we went on a date or something, his phone would be blowing up with text messages and everything. And you know what? I'm, I've never been the controller type. I've never been, like, the jealous type. I've never been, like, oh, like, who the fuck are you texting? Like, or why are you texting somebody when you're with me? Like, I'm just not like that. Like, I will let you do your thing. Just respect like us the relationship that we have and that's it that's just all i ask for you know brayden driving and then it was his friend me and then karina so brayden gets a phone call in the car on our way to the ranch and he answers it and he starts talking to somebody the way that he talks to me you know the way that your man talks to you like in that tone and like with those you know giggly shit and you you know you know Okay, well, he was talking to a girl like that because I could hear her. I could hear where it was a girl. And I was like, who the fuck, right? And I was telling Karina, like, um, I don't, I don't like that. Like, I had been telling her, like, I don't like that. He was like, dude, just, just ask for his phone. Like, you know, if you're so scared, just ask for his phone. And I was like, I'm not like that. Like, I, I'm not like that. I'm, I've never been jealous. I've, but my gut was on one. Like, Karina was telling me, this is in the car. Karina was telling me, dude, like just ask for his phone. Like, it's okay, just ask for it. And I was like, okay, I did it. The, the first time that I asked for a dude's phone ever. So I asked Brayden. I was like, hey Brayden, can I borrow your phone for something? You know, blah, blah, blah. But I was actually gonna check his call log. I check his call log and like, yeah, it was a girl. And there's like a bunch of girls' names and everything. But that's all that I checked. I just checked the call log. So we get to the ranch, and I'm sitting there in the chair like how I told you. It already had been a couple minutes, hours, I don't know, that we were there. And um, I'm telling her how I'm scared and everything. And then I end up turning, like, I end up hearing Brayden say, babe. And I turn, and he has a poster, and he has roses, and there's a song playing. And he's asking me to be his girlfriend, and I said yes. Um, before that, I had also been telling her that I was scared because... Um, after like being at the ranch, I was gonna take a selfie on Brayden's phone. And you know how on your camera roll, you can see on the left corner, the previous picture. Okay, well, I was getting ready to take a picture, right? And I see in the left corner that there's a picture of him and a girl in a car. Now I click it and I see that it's like at three in the morning, he was driving and she was on the passenger seat. And it was literally the day that he had first met Karim. And we hung out like basically all night and he didn't leave until like two or three in the morning. And this dude had literally gone to hang out with another girl after he hung out with me and my tia, which is Karim. So I kind of got pretty upset and I was really angry. My thing that bothered me was that he didn't tell me that he was with a girl, especially at three in the morning, especially after he had just hung out with me and my family like no and especially when i'm pretty sure that night he told me he was going home and going to sleep not hanging out with another girl and that is what bothered me and i started telling karina and karina was like dude like it's okay it's okay like he's gonna delete the picture he's gonna delete the picture and i was like it's not even about that it's not even about that but whatever i ended up getting over it hours passed I'm sitting there t talking to her about that incident and about the car ride, and then he ends up asking me to be his girlfriend, and I said yes. That's where our relationship started, January 21st of 2017.
we're not done yet. <laughs> this is not the end of the video. After a week of me and Brayden dating, um, he ended up cheating on me. Uh, obviously, I didn't know at that time, but I ended up finding out like a week later. So three weeks, four weeks into our relationship, a month like into our relationship, maybe a little bit before, I ended up finding out that Brayden cheated on me. And the way that I found out was that he um, was at Karima's house. And Karima was taking pictures of me and Brayden on her bed. And she had a couch across her bed and she was sitting on the couch. And she asked for Brayden's phone so she could take cute pictures on Snapchat for Brayden to post. Now Brayden and I are posing doing being all cute and shit. And Brayden gets like a message or whatever. And Brayden freaks out. And he gets up and he snatches the phone away from her. And that's when I was like, what, you had something to hide or what? And I start laughing, right? Because like, I'm never like that. I was honestly joking. And he was like, I ain't got nothing to hide. You can check my phone. And he gives me his phone, right? And I was like, nah, nah, I'm not going to check. And he's like, go for it, go for it. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to check. So like, I'm going through his Snapchat, right? Bunch of, bunch of, bunch of fucking girls, guys. A bunch of girls. Like, a bunch of girls. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, okay. Girlfriends is cool, but like, 50 million of them? What, do you, what even, right? I'm going down. And there's this one girl that goes to our school. And I was like, oh, she goes to our school. I trust her with you. My exact words. I trust her with you. I'm passing like girls names, right? And I was just asking like, who's this, who's this? I wasn't actually going into the, the messages, but this one girl, he told me that it was his ex-girlfriend. And I open it and I'm like sliding and he snatches the phone away from me and I, my heart starts pumping. And I kind of started shaking, right? Like I have anxiety, I shake, right? Like I, can't deal with shit like that I, I like that's just the trigger right so I started freaking out right and I, this whole time Karim is just sitting on the couch watching us and I'm like getting uh, like up in Brayden's face and I'm like like what are you hiding from me what are you hiding from me like just give me your fucking phone right finally he deletes the fucking message he takes her off and he gives me the phone back and I just tell him to leave but like sneaky shit I didn't appreciate it because there was like some girls where he just really didn't want me to open the message and I didn't really appreciate that so I just told him to leave so he left now that night I ended up crying to get him and I'm telling and I told it I told her I was like I know he's cheating on me and I cried and I cried and the whole reason why I cried is not because like I mean we had only been dating for like a couple weeks or maybe even a month but the whole reason why I was crying was because of the fact that like I had previously just gotten out of a relationship that I got cheated on like the next one am I really gonna have to deal with that shit again and like the fact where like people just take advantage of me and the trust that I have for them, I just, I was just so tired of the way that guys are treating me. So that's why I was crying. And obviously cause like that shit hurts, right? Um, and so she was like, dude, just ask for his passwords and we'll log into it. And I was like, you know what, I'll do it. I don't know if I suggested that or she suggested that I'm gonna say that she did. And then so I do ask for his passwords, but I don't log into them. I don't log into them right away. I waited until the morning. He's at church, and I thought that that would be the perfect time where I would log into his Snapchat and I would look through his messages. Now, I go back to the girl who goes to our school, and um, I open it, and I slide, and they were sexting. And they had planned on meeting up. And, um, yeah, so uh, I started crying. <laughs> and I called him, and I broke up with him right then and there. And he actually tried to convince me that it was not him, but obviously it was. He said he wanted to talk to me in person. Now, he comes over to Ganima's house, and um, I'm sitting in the living room, and he's sitting in the couch, and on the other couch across from me. And, like, I'm crying because he had nothing to say. And, like, he, he came with his eyes kind of, like, puffy and red, and, like, he looked like he was crying. And, um... I was tearing up and I was crying and I was telling him like how I didn't appreciate that and like how I had previously been hurt and how like he knew that and how he could do that to me and like if he just didn't want to be in a relationship well he why did he get into one like he tried so hard to get me like I actually thought that he really liked me I didn't really think that he'd ever be capable of doing anything like that even though previ previously people had already told me that you know to watch out we ended up getting back together yeah, we ended up getting back together. 
Um, I couldn't stay away from him, and I couldn't stop talking to him, and we just ended up getting back together. I don't know how it start. I don't know how that happened, but I just remember throughout that our first breakup where um, I just really missed him, and like he really missed me too, and we just thought that it'd be better if we just got back together. And I told him I obviously told him that I wouldn't trust him the same way. He's gonna have to like gain my trust back, and he's gonna have to work for it. And I thought that. I mean, he obviously promised me that it would never happen again, of course. And I believed every lie that he told me. This is the first um, time that he ever did me wrong. And there's many times where he did me wrong and fucked me over so bad. This wasn't anything. Like, yeah, I was crying, like, throughout, like, this part of the relationship. But this was nothing. I had no idea what was in store for me. And, ugh, yikes. But, um, thank you guys for watching. I hope this was not boring. Um... There will obviously be uh, videos to come about the rest of the relationship. I just felt like doing a series of, of my toxic relationship just to show how what not to do in a relationship um, and how not to react and that, yeah. Oh, I also want to say that this toxic relationship was not only him. Like, I could have done things differently and there was also some toxic ways that I had and that I learned from and um I mean I wasn't perfect I wasn't innocent in this relationship either so I just want to throw that out there but thank you guys for watching my social media is obviously going to be down below like I say if you guys are going through the same thing if you guys need advice if you guys just want to talk whatever you guys are f like feel free to like um message me or whatever and I will see you guys in the next video